Merry Christmas here from ACC, folks, and welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone update for the nation. Today, the 25th of December, 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Alrighty, the big news since our last update has been a tropical cyclone watch being issued yesterday for this area here in the southwestern Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, there was a tropical low, there is a tropical low located near Pine Creek here, moving in an easterly direction at the moment and will continue to do so now until it makes it either into the southwest Gulf or the southwest Gulf country uh, and then will start to drift in a more southerly to south southeasterly direction. And I guess the big thing to note here is when it does that and where it does that is going to be extremely important for who gets rain in Queensland and when. But for the meantime, in the meantime, we're going to see heavy rainfall here, particularly on the western side of this low, and we're already starting to see that over the Northern Territory. Thanks to the radar imagery here from Weather Zone, we can certainly see that the low pressure centre located right near Pine Creek here, uh, tracking in this easterly direction pretty slowly at the moment. We really need it if you... If you live on the northeast coast of Queensland, you're really rooting for this thing to move quickly. You want it to be moving quickly to the east because the quicker it can get out there into the Gulf of Carpentaria, the more chance it has of moving further east before drifting southwards. So at this stage for northeast Queensland, the fact that it's moving quite slowly initially is not good news. And in fact, what it was doing just uh, earlier today was actually still drifting to the west. So this particular system has been extremely difficult to model uh, and has not been following what the models have been saying it was going to do and it's all it's around about one full day behind where it was supposed to be uh, this time say three days ago when we were when we were talking about it three days ago we were already expecting it to be shifting well east of this well east of this location uh, yet it still man manages to be sitting here and drifting only very slowly to the east Elsewhere across the north, we've had a very strong convective activity associated with that tropical low located to the west of the actual low. Uh, also now, we're starting to see stronger convective activity located here to the south of the low in the Rope of MacArthur District. Across the western peninsula, we've seen some very heavy convective activity along that monsoonal trough all day today. Lighter activity extending into the east coast, anywhere north of about Innisfail being around about the cutoff there. Some lighter shower activity extending into the central coast region. Uh, very light falls there and also some showers and thunderstorms not shown so much on this map further to the south here around Queensland a trough across inland Queensland producing a scattered shower and thunderstorm activity as well although rainfall totals so far have not been very high from those let's take a quick rundown of all the computer models and what they're suggesting will happen with this low pressure system the first one we're looking at here is the European thanks to tropicaltidbits.com uh, we can see the euro has the low located here to the southeast of Darwin Tracking east and then east again, but quite slowly here. Uh, so we're not looking at a, a very fast moving system. So probably the fastest it moves is going to be in the next 24 hours. Then it starts to slow down here across the western Gulf of Carpentaria and then eventually will track in a southerly direction. Now where it makes this southerly shift is extremely important as to who gets rain on this part of the coast and how much rain you're going to get. So I'm not going to speculate. All I'm going to show you is the bomb maps at the moment but it will all hinge on where this system starts tracking south. What we can see here along the Queensland coast is a ridge pushing up the coast. This will drag the monsoon trough down. So what we're going to see is a trough system from that particular low crossing the coast, probably somewhere around the Cairns to Townsville area. Anywhere in the vicinity, particularly to the south of that, we'll see some very heavy falls of rain. Now that trough won't stick around. That trough will continually move with the low. As the low drifts this way, the trough drifts this way. Now, how strong the convergence will be along that trough will depend on how close that low is to this coast of Queensland. So if the low is located a long way west into the Northern Territory as it drifts down, the convergence zone here will be quite weak. And so you'll only see 50, maybe 100 millimetres. If the low starts drifting a little bit further to the east, for, uh, further to the east uh, in the Queensland area, uh, in northwest Queensland area, I should say, we will see that enhanced convergence zone, or that convergence zone being enhanced, so it'll be stronger. That will result in falls of one to 300 millimetres of rain. So that is the difference, and a key difference here in only two or 300 kilometre difference in track 
can result in massive differences in rainfall along that east Queensland coast. Look, it's almost a given that we will see some convergence along this coastline. But what we want to know is, is it going to be dam filling rain or is it just going to be grass growing rain? Okay, so that's what we're really tossing up between here. Now at this stage, the cutoff area, uh, according to most of the computer guidance, is Townsville for that strong rainfall. Now anywhere south of that is looking at more light to moderate falls. But it all hinges on what happens with this low. I hope I've made that extremely clear because I know we copped a little bit of criticism last time because we said there was going to be heavy rain and because Townsville didn't get the heavy rain, everyone thinks automatically we're wrong. So what I'm telling you now is this is very important. This low is very important in who gets the rain and how much rain you get. Into the longer term, though, we can see that the system tracks southwards here, bringing in down the monsoon trough, bringing in a lot of moist northerly air into northwestern and western Queensland. That will be a godsend to the pastoralists. They will really, really be reveling in that. We're talking 50 to 100 millimetres at least over fairly widespread areas uh, with this particular system tracking this far south bringing down a lot of moisture from the Gulf, a fairly strong monsoonal influence as well. So there's a lot of moisture up there. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of rainfall associated with this system as it drifts southwards. Alrighty, that was only one computer model. So let's take a look at another couple. All right, here's the GFS computer model. Let's track this system. You can see it makes it into the southwestern Gulf, probably around about Sunday afternoon or evening, and it continues to track southeastwards just on the coast there. Right on the Queensland NT border, it starts to drift south. Now, you can see this ridge up here. You can see that the uh, that the ridge ends up weakening here, uh, and the monsoon trough is somewhere around that Cairns region to Cooktown. So you can see slightly different here, can't you? You can see that the ridge is a little bit stronger, and you can see that the trough is a little bit further north. Uh, the system, look at it, it's a little bit further west. That's the sort of difference I'm talking about. With this system being a little bit further to the west, the trough ends up crossing the coast and the north coast of Queensland a little bit further to the north. All of the stronger rainfall now is Cairns northwards. So these are the sort of subtle changes in the computer model guidance out to day five, six, and seven that result in massive changes in the sort of rainfall you're going to receive here on the northeast coast. Now, it doesn't, doesn't change the fact that northwest Queensland is going to see a lot of rain. Both these scenarios create a hell of a lot of rain for this region, uh, but uh, this scenario is not as good for rainfall to spread further south than the first scenario shown by the European. Now into the longer term, the system stays around the eastern half of the Northern Territory and then eventually pushes into the far western parts of Queensland. You can see here, moist northerly winds are coming in. So you can see the isobar is really showing us here where the winds are coming from. And you can see they're coming in from the north, a lot of moisture and a lot of uplift created by the low, which means a lot of rain. The CMC computer model hasn't got a great handle on the system at the moment. It's already got it in the Gulf by early to mid-afternoon tomorrow. Uh, 997 hectopascals, tracking it in a much more easterly direction. That means not much rain for northwest Queensland. It means heaps and heaps and absolute truckload of rain here across the northeast coast of Queensland. This is an outlying scenario. We do not expect this to happen but it is still a scenario that's being modelled and that has been very consistent on this model for a long period of time. This is a more westerly, uh, more westerly outlier than most and we can see that the system really only just makes it to the Gulf on Monday afternoon and then tracks pretty well south uh, from there. And you can see that the system sort of just lingers here in the Queensland NT border. Still same sort of thing for Northwest Queensland. It's almost, I'm not going to say it's a given, no way in the world, because this thing hasn't been playing ball. But uh, at this stage on most of the computer model guidance, you would suggest there's about an 80 to 90% chance of seeing some very worthwhile rainfall uh, across here, the Northwest parts of Queensland and the Gulf country of Queensland. So uh, really some top Top-notch uh, falls expected in this area, assuming, of course, the, the the computer models are onto this and the system starts to play ball. As I said, it hasn't been playing ball now for about a week. It hasn't been doing what it was supposed to do. So it is pretty naive to just expect it to do everything that the models are saying it's going to do from here on. So Boxing Day, folks, it looks like a pretty wet start to the Boxing Day test as well. Uh, looking at, uh, you know, 10 to 15 millimetres, so even up to 15 to 20 millimetres here uh, across Melbourne through the day. 
Uh, also looking at quite wild and woolly conditions for the Sydney to Hobart race too. So the two big Australian sporting events tomorrow probably going to be marred by weather issues at some stage through the first 24 hours of that event as well. Uh, but more importantly, for our sakes, we're looking up here. In the Northern Territory, we're going to see very heavy falls across northern inland of the NT, uh, but uh, lighter falls on the coastal regions. Also, possibly some moderate to heavy falls up here around Gove, Nullanboy, up here in the far northern or northeastern parts of the Arnhem District. Also, the southwest Gulf of Carpenter southeast Gulf of Carpentaria and western peninsula, expecting to see some fairly heavy rainfall. We're also expecting to see some pretty good convergence occurring here in the north tropical coast region, so we could see falls 50 to 100 millimetres. Pretty wet, uh, pretty wet all up for your Boxing Day, anywhere north of around about, at this stage, the cutoff being around Cardwell or Innisfail. Uh, you can see some lighter falls extending all the way south to about Townsville, also some lighter falls here on the central coast. That trough across inland Queensland still going to be there, still going to create scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area. Also some showers and thunderstorms developing across the Pilbara uh, tomorrow. As we go to Sunday, uh, Sunday we're going to see that low drifting into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Big increase on the southern gulf of rainfall in general, extending into the northwest parts of Queensland, the far eastern parts of the Northern Territory as well. We're going to see that area of rainfall start to move southwards and incorporate Townsville to Bowen coastline as well. So we're going to start to see an increase in showers. Now this is only on the proviso that the system is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Of course, if the system does something different, then this will just be thrown out of whack automatically. So subscribers, you'll have a video update tomorrow to make sure that's not happening. Uh, for the general public, we'll have another video update here on the 27th. So there may be some changes, some big changes between now and then in this situation. So I guess that is one of the perks of being a subscriber. We let you know straight away when those things are happening. So at this stage, that's what's expected to happen. That trough across inland Queensland just shifts a tiny bit east and is fed by a little bit more moisture. So that scattered shower and thunderstorm activity becomes even more widespread on the Sunday. Extending up here to the northern parts of the Northern Territory, the, the west coast of the Northern Territory is seeing a decrease in activity. We're seeing a slight increase in activity across the western parts of the Kimberley and we continue to see isolated showers and thunderstorms across the Pilbara as well on Sunday. On Monday, there should be a huge caveat on this saying dependent on the movement and position of tropical cyclone stand slash tropical low because everything is dependent on that. Except for, I guess, this rain around the southern gulf. I think we're going to see that no matter what it does. So that one you can pretty well bank on. You're going to see a lot of rain here around the southern gulf, no matter what that system does. Uh, now, whether or not we see that rain extending into northwest Queensland, the majority of computer models say that we will start to see that, and that rainfall will be very significant. It's not going to be grass, grass wetting stuff. It's going to be dam filling stuff. Okay, so that is it's a very significant rainfall expected in this region, should the low do what it's expected to do. Now that rainfall across northeastern Queensland will drift south with that low. We will see pockets of very heavy rainfall at the moment. The area that uh, the computer models are honing in on is this Townsville coastline, the Herbert Lower Burdekin coastline, but that may change dependent on the movement of the tropical low. Uh, we can see there was there is a weakening of shower and storm activity across the Pilbara and Kimberley, so we see less active storm activity there. Um, we continue to see very active activity, very active, uh, very active monsoonal uh, flow here on the western peninsula, and also we continue to see showers and thunderstorms here across northern Queensland in general. That trough system across Queensland shifts a little bit further east, gets fed with a lot more moisture, so we see general shower and thunderstorm activity throughout this region now on the Monday. Probably not worth looking out this far because, once again, it is fully dependent on the movement and position of tropical cyclone stan or tropical low. Now, assuming it does what it's supposed to do, we will see a continuation of flood falls here in the northwest part of Queensland. We will see a continuation of very heavy rainfall here across the northern to northeast coast of Queensland with the potential for a very weak low or eddy to spin up on that monsoon trough too. Uh, we'll have a little bit more of a discussion on that on the 27th when we talk about it. Uh, but at this stage, we're expecting to see very heavy rain here, very heavy rain here, and probably a slight uh, decrease or, or a slightly drier patch in between those two zones. 
So it accumulated falls over the next four days. You can see very heavy rain across the northwest parts of Queensland and the northeast coast of Queensland. Uh, lighter falls extending through most of the state of Queensland, extending also very heavy falls in the northern parts of the Northern Territory. Now that is mostly in the next day or two. Once that low shifts to the east of that, we're going to see a, a drying out of that region. Now not a complete drying out, but certainly a decrease in activity. Once again, the caveat, and I do stress it, it is totally dependent on the movement and development of Tropical Cyclone Stan. And looking at the four days after that, well, it's no point because we really need to be confident on the first four days to be confident on the next four days. And at the moment, we're only confident out to about day one and two. So folks, you are armed now with the knowledge of what is the most likely scenario but you're also armed with the knowledge on the possible variations to that scenario. The signs are very positive for widespread rain in areas that really, really do need rain. But the subtleties in the track forecast for this low will determine the exact locations and the exact intensities of that rainfall. Thanks for watching. I hope you've had a great day today. We'll talk to you again on the 27th. Subscribers, just a heads up, you'll have a video update tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, 27th in the morning, and then the public update will be on the 27th at night. To become a subscriber, go to ozcyclonechasers.com.au, click on subscribe, and you'll be helping us document tropical cyclones, as well as gaining in-depth and up-to-date information on all the latest model trends on tropical cyclones. Hope you have a wonderful Boxing Day, and I'll talk to you again on the 27th.